This is Twit. Okay, so this is moderately random, but not too far afield for this podcast. Everyone knows of my passion for coding, but I predate electronic computers and before computers was electronics. Although coding has taken over, electronics will always be my first love. So in addition to coding, I occasionally do a bit of tinkering, hacking and designing with electronics. At some point in the past, some Googling must have taken me to a place called Seed Studio. That's S-E-E-E-D spelled with three E's, seedstudio.com. I purchased something from them, I don't now remember what, and as a consequence was promptly added to their periodic mailing list. In this case, I don't mind the spam because the mail contains photos of the stuff they're promoting and my jaw spends most of its time hanging down with my mouth open (laughs) over the insanely low cost of the technology that's currently available from China. It is truly astonishing. For example, a recent mailing showed the Seed Studio XIAO ESP32C3. It's a tiny module about the size of a quarter with 14 electrical connections, seven on either side, and what appears to be two tiny buttons and an LED. It also has a tiny USB-C connector, presumably for programming this little thing. And all of the software for doing so is open source. Its description says, Seed Studio XIAO ESP32C3 adopts new RISC-V architecture. Ooh. Supporting both Wi-Fi and BLE wireless connections. On this that thing? thing? On that thing? Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. What? For Internet of Things applications, you will find it is flexible and suitable for all kinds of IoT scenarios. Okay. I was curious, so I looked into the chip this uses. The ESP32C3. It's a 32-bit RISC-V microprocessor, which includes a whole host of I.O. peripherals in addition to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5. It has cryptographic hardware accelerators that support AES-128-256, SHA hashes, RSA, HMAC, digital signatures, secure boot, and and has a hardware random number generator. And how much is it if you purchase just one? $4.99. $4.99. Oh, my God. Oh, five, my God. $5 for that. And that's like, that is just typical of what this Seed Studio has for sale. Anyway. Just don't try to bring what, it into South Dakota. That's all I'm saying. No, 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 no. That's, that's outlawed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might have TikTok embedded on it. Uh, anyway. That is so cool. And risk. everybody's very interested in this Risk Five. This is the newest yeah. kind of open source uh, well, digital architecture. And, yes, and license free, right? The reason they're not there's no ARM on this is you have to pay ARM for that. And you're not going to sell something for $5 that has this and everything else it has if, if, if you have to pay some ARM licensing fee. It shows fee. you what so, the ARM tax is, really. If you think about it, yeah, and so risk, and I mean, risk five is it, it's a beautiful architecture. It's been it's been like moving along for years, and it's evolving, and it has an absolutely mature, open source, free tool chain for doing stuff. But none of that is why I'm I brought this up today. Although Steve, you could put your, you know, it could be a spin right hardware device. Does it have room for software? You could put Spinrite on it. You wouldn't have to use DOS or anything. You just plug it in and boot to it. Wonderful. $5. I'm just telling you. (laughs) I'm just telling you. All right. All yours. Okay. That's not why I'm telling anyone about this. I'm telling anyone about this because a month or two ago, maybe three, something in one of those mailings brought me up short. Because it was similarly stunning. And I thought you guys, our listeners, all needed to at least know about it. It got away from me when I went back to try to find it. I don't know. I didn't know where it went. But 
when their most recent mailing mentioned it again. I thought, okay, this time it's not getting away from me. Okay, get a load of this. It's called <clears throat> the Link Star H68K-1432 Multimedia Router. It has Wi-Fi 6, 4 gig of RAM, 32 gig of eMMC flash storage on board with an SD card slot for more. It's powered by a quad-core 64-bit Cortex A55 chip, an ARM G52 2EE GPU. There's a GPU because it can output HDMI 4K video at 60 frames what? per second. It had it. By the way, Leo, it's two and a half by three and a half inches. That's the size of that <laughs> little thing you, that that you're looking at. It has a USB 3 port, two USB 2 ports, a USB Type C that can be attached to a SATA 3 drive. On the router side, aside from its dual band. 1200 megabits Wi-Fi 6. It also has four Ethernet ports. <laughs> I don't know how they fit them in. <laughs> individual interfaces, two running at up to two and a half gig, another two at one gig. It comes with Android 11 pre-installed, <gasps> but also supports Ubuntu, Debian, Armbian, OpenWRT, and BuildRoot, which is used to build embedded Linux systems. I just thought of a new so, geek game we could play. Geek Price is Right. So what will this little pocket-sized fanless Wi-Fi 6 4 Ethernet interface router set you back? How about $119? Unbelievable. Wow. That's what got my attention. Th th that little NetGate SG1100 router that I love and use and have recommended, it's 189 and it only has three Ethernet interfaces and no Wi-Fi. This thing has four separate interfaces and Wi-Fi 6 and a ton more. Um, the fact that you can drop OpenWRT onto it and have an operating state-of-the-art router with four ports, all you know, isolated individual subnets, and Wi-Fi 6 for $119? Could you put PFSense on it, do you think? That I don't know. I, that that's a question I have, and maybe one of our listeners will be interested to try. Again, it's it's hard to imagine this thing from the picture. It's two and a half inches by three and a half inches, and it's fanless. It's got a little heat sink on the bottom, multiple USB uh, ports, uh, uh, 4K HDMI, and, and, and a and a uh, SD card slot. It's just incredible for 119 in bucks. In the palm of your hands. I want to be clear, I don't own one. I don't have time to own one. And I'm not vouching for it. <laughs> do not, not buy it. We're going to get do mad not, at you. Do, that's right. I do, I'm, so I'm not vouching it for any, for any way. Unlike the Zima board, which I was happy to vouch for, since I had several and I loved them, you're on your own with this thing if you should decide to take the plunge. For the right hardware tinkerer, this could be so much fun. And it's not very expensive. I have the link in the show notes, and it is episode 900's, this episode's GRC, GRC shortcut of the week. So grc.sc slash 900, that will take you to this thing's webpage where you can see for yourself. Anyway, I just... It was so cool, so inexpensive. It could be the perfect home router, four ports, of, and Wi-Fi 6 for $119. Really cool. Boy, yeah. we live in amazing times, Steve. Can you imagine we, if you were a young guy, you know, a teenager, you know, at the time building the portable dog killer, if you'd had something like Seed Studio available to you? You might have. Uh, unfortunately, I'd probably be bringing Elon's satellites down <laughs> if I had it. That's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing uh, you didn't have it. So, wow. Uh, wow. I figured out how to fire the retro rockets. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Ant Pruitt, and I am the host of Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I know you got yourself a fancy smartphone, you got yourself a fancy camera, but your pictures are still lacking. Can't quite figure out what the heck shutter speed means? Watch my show. I got you covered. Want to know more about just the ISO and exposure triangle in general? Yeah, I got you covered. 
Or if you got all of that down, you want to get into lighting, you know, making things look better by changing the lights around you. I got you covered on that too. So check us out each and every Thursday here on the network. Go to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today. Hey.